Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, as you can see, this time we're looking at a Fig 20. Um, this one has definitely seen better days. It's pretty bashed up the case. It's got some awful marks here. A lot of solder and iron marks. I don't know how the hell someone's managed to get a solder and iron on there. Um, but yeah, anyway, I have got another one of these which I'll show you in a minute. Um, just arrived today and um, it's confirmed my suspicions. There's a problem with the Vic on this. Um, on first powering it up, um, well, I'll show you. Actually, I'll show you. It's got the original bit in there at the moment. So, point to the screen, switch it on. You know, you get a click, and there's no sync. You know, you still got the blue screen from the TV there. It's not presenting a dis you know, signal. Now, I did connect this up to um, a TV that's got a composite input. You know, an old analog TV, and um, what you saw was like a black bar with a white screen so it's well it's like, it was like a third of the screen the left hand third of the screen was like um, I think it was a white block and then the right hand two parts of the screen were black blocks so it's a bit strange and that click you know is the sound obviously and that's not normal so I, I suspect it's right from the offset that there's a problem with Vic on this um, now I've got the pinouts for the 6502 here CPU on the Vic it's the same as the common as the C64. The only difference is I think there's some additional I/O stuff on the 6510 and the C64, and some sort of um, tri-state logic on the um, uh, on the bus on one of the buses. I don't know it's the address bus. I can't remember. Uh, built in, so you can't just swap. You know, you can't just swap the chips, even though the core CPU part for this is is pretty much the same. It's very interesting looking at these. This is this one's one of the cost reduced versions. Um, and in fact, I'll just show you the other one now. I've just whipped the lid off this one. Um, this is the original um, version, so it's not going to be easy to film because of the uh, shielding. But um, yeah, so you can see the board is a lot larger if you compare it to the cost reduced version. The other difference is this uses the uh, DIN type connector here for the power. So I'm using a Commodore 64 power supply with that at the moment, that's working fine. Um, Whereas this one, uh, if I show you the side, you've got a 9-pin AC connector there, so it, you know it's a different power supply and the it's 5 volts is generated and derived from that 9 volts. So I think the 9 volts probably provided for the VIC, um, at least, I would think. Uh, probably the components on there probably just using 5 volts. Um, but yeah, it's got its own sort of 5 volts um, supply you know regulator on there and hence these massive heat sinks and things um, it'd be nice to try and get both of these working this one works as far as I understand this original one um, but this one sorry I've got stuff all over the place here if I try and grab this keyboard yeah so this one has got uh, a smashed keyboard it's got keys missing it's got the original I don't know if this one stuck that on there it looks like it probably is original I do remember going around to a friend's house when I was younger uh, a friend of mine Julian playing on jetpack I have fond memories of playing on his Commodore 60 uh, Commodore uh, Vic 20 there um, and that I'm sure that's the logo he had but anyway so what I think I'm gonna do is probably swap the keyboards around because the keyboards okay on this one and th incidentally these look for all intents and purposes, like a Commodore 64 keyboard, I'm pretty sure all the markings on them uh, for the pesky, you know, the, the symbols there for the graphics, I think they're all the same. I will compare that to my 664s, but um, yeah, I think they're the same, so I'll probably swap the keyboards over, keep this case um, with the, uh, the one that I'm going to get working, this one for the moment, but ultimately I'll probably swap them back. Once I have got the keycaps for my Commodore 64s, um, now I don't know if you've seen that in a previous video. There's new, you can get some new, there's some new keys being done for these. So I'm going to have a spare set of these black keys or dark, dark brown, call them what you want, dark brown probably, for, on my old, from my old C64 that I'll be able to use to fix the, that keyboard. So I will be able to swap all of this back and have two completely functioning systems if I can source another Vic chip. You'll see they've taken the Vic chip out of there for the moment. It's just on some anti-static foam there. Um, but that's, that, that's uh, yeah, they, they will hopefully be able to both be functioning at some point if I can source a Vic. I did see one, I think there was one on the line. Um, it was about 17, uh, 17 pound plus shipping, which is a bit pricey. Um, so if you know anyone out there that's got a supply of Vic chips at a reasonable price, please let me know, but they're, they're damn near impossible to source. Um, so when I put the other one in here in a minute, I will put some heat sinks on it because they do get red hot. Um, it seems like uh, yeah, they are one of the main chips to fail in these Vic 20s. Um, the, the CPU, you can 
swap out with um, an alternative manufacturer. I think there's, um, I forget the name of it now. Um, I'll show you in a future video because we've got a, a substitute CPU on the way and I've also got a substitute 6522 on the way which I want to test them out. I think the Rockwell, I think it's a Rockwell CPU and a Rockwell 6522 so I'm going to test that theory and make sure they work in here. Um, what else have you got? I may as well show a few other things while we're here. I think that's the kernel ROM um, so you can get black screens you know at, at 9 times out of 10 it'll be the kernel ROM. Um, You've got, I don't know if that's the basic, uh, sorry, yeah, I think it is, I think that's the basic ROM. And I think you've got a character ROM here, used by the Vic chip. And then you've got three of these two 114 uh, RAM chips here, and then two um, RAM chips here. I'm not sure whether they're DRAM um, or what. Um, there's very little RAM in these. I think some, I read somewhere saying it's something like 5K. Um, not sure how the hell you get 5K. It's a bit of an unusual um, amount. You know, if these are 2K each, that gives you 4K. Um, I don't know. I need to. Uh, don't quote me. I need to check first. I've not really looked much into the, the, the specifications of these, um, but it's very similar in layout to the Commodore 64. Um, you know, you've got the 6522s here. You know, in the C64, you've got the 6526s, which sit in the same place right next to the keyboard connector. It's all very similar. Similar in architecture. Um, you know, I think the difference really between the C64 and the Vic 20 really. Um, if you exclude the minor differences in the CPU, because it really is minor, it's kind of um, it's kind of supporting logic that's built onto the thing really more than anything. The actual, not even logic, supporting you know I/O stuff that's on the 64 CPU. So if you just discount that as a difference, then you, you're left with really the Vic. You know, you've got Vic 2 on a Commodore 64, so it's more capable in terms of graphics. And on the C64 you've got the SID, obviously, whereas I think on this system the sound is generated actually on the VIC chip from from what I read of the, because I did look at the data sheet to the, for the VIC chip there. Um, and I guess I'll cover a few things that led me to towards, you know, thinking it was the VIC chip actually prior to this other system arriving today. So I mean, I got my trusty Logic Probe out and um, I didn't get the scope onto this because I thought, well, we'll just check for a clock. So I checked the CPU clock, um, looked at the pinout to 6502 so I knew exactly what was, you know, which pins were what. Um, I had a clock on there, um, I had activity on the reset, I had activity on all the data lines, on all the address lines, and I followed it through really. Um, you know, I checked out on, on the, the RAM, we had um, access on all the data, data lines of the RAM, um, I could see chip selects and things on, on the uh, basic and the uh, kernel, um, and activity on the uh, data bus there, uh, you know, in the address bus, no issues at all. Um, so it was at that point really I started to speculate maybe there's something wrong with the Vic. Um, now I did a test which I've done before on Commodore 64s and sometimes when you get a black screen on a C64 if you plug a, plug a floppy drive in, in fact I can show you that now actually I'll show you exactly what I did. If I connect my SD to IEC here uh, just make sure it's all connected up okay and uh, just pull that there switch it on, oh, sorry I need to connect the keyboard up just bear with me a second Right, I've got the keyboard connected up now. Switch it on, you'll see the lights come on initially, right? And I'll show you the screen. We've got no sync, you know, so there's nothing. It's not outputting anything. And if I just type load space FB20 close comma eight return, you see it's hitting the disk drive there. So that's a good sign. I switch it off now. That's a good sign that uh, this, the core functionality in the system, you know, the basic interpreter's up and running. It's scanning the keyboard input. It's taken my responses there and gone away and done some stuff with the serial port. So, you know, that's ruled a few things out there. It's ruled out. Well, we've certainly got some serial activity. We've certainly got basic up. We've certainly got it actually, you know, accessing commands. The RAM must be okay to a degree. Um, etc. So the fact we're getting no no display, and if you leave it on for a minute or two, it does get quite warm. That um, warmer, certainly warmer than um, you know the the one that works. So that was the indication to me. Yeah, I need a Vic chip for this, unfortunately. And then in the last hour, the um, the other uh, Vic twenties arrived, and just first thing I've done is just take the Vic out, stick it in here, and it works, uh, which I'll show you now actually. So there you go. I can see I've got the replacement Vic in there. Uh, Pointing at the TV. I'll switch it on. You'll see it's, uh, it's working fine. Um, the display um, is not great there. 
there are a couple of mods you can do which I probably will do to this to tidy up the display a little bit um, yeah but for now I think I'm just going to focus on cleaning this up um, I'll heat sink that Vic um, and I'll start to reassemble it and use the like I say the other case um, rather than this uh, you know dinted scratched up one to swap the keyboards over but then I will also come back to the other Vic 20 at some point we'll press to it you know a bit more in detail look at the board on that one um, I'll remove some of the shield and stuff and I'll see if I can get hold of a Vic chip and we'll see if I can get that one working as well so you can see I've recased it now um, so you can see so you can see I've recased it now I've put the uh, the decent keyboard with a decent case and the working motherboard um, may the ones just over there which I will um, at some point from getting a new Vic chip I'll get that up and running as well. I'm not sure I'm going to do with the case because the case is quite damaged and I do need a couple of keys for that as well. But uh, anyway, I'll show you on the screen here. Um, I'm going to try and just do a couple of mods. Uh, I don't know how well they're going to come out on this camera. Can you see if you look at the blue lines there, um, just down here, you've got like, uh, you know, jail bar type stuff going on. So here you go, you can see the mods I've done now. Um, I've got an electrolytic cap here um, smoothing the. Um, the VCC to the VIC chip here, um, so it goes between pin uh, 40 and pin 20 I think. There's actually, rather than go to all the way down to pin 20 for the ground, um, there's a ground nearby uh, just on the side of this 7402 um, here, which I've, that's, you know, you can see I've just soldered directly onto that there, um, and onto a pad that joins straight to pin 2, uh, sorry not pin 2, pin 40. Um, so that made a difference on its own. Uh, you can see obviously I've got heat sinks on here now as well. Um, that will help uh, keeping this thing cool, uh, extends life a little bit. And you can see there was a ferrite bead here where there are now two caps in parallel. Um, one's a 220 peak farad, the other one's a 47 peak farad to give me a, a, approximately 270 peak farads. Um, and then the induct, the, the actual ferrite bead that was there. Um, you remove that obviously um, and then from the out the, the side here for sorry, the screwdriver from this side here where it joins the cap that pr goes to the output sort of stage if you like um, at this the point on this side of the cap you you, what you're supposed to do is stick an in, a, a connection from an inductor something like a I don't know I think it's between 10 micro henrys and 15 50 micro henrys uh, to ground through that inductor now I tried that with various different inductor sizes there and I was getting like um, ghosted really really badly like a shadow um, so I thought well let's just try it with the just the the inductor that I removed the ferrite bead and I tried that and it's perfect I'll show you um, I haven't done anything with the color biasing um, well I did try um, and uh, yeah it, for me I don't actually need it I think the colors are fine um, whether it's just the way this TV handles it or not I don't know but I don't know if you can see there now we've um, you know, you can see the lines, the little gel bar lines, a little bit on the white background, just a little bit. But if you look at the blue background, you know, compared to as it was before, there's nothing. There's no um, gel bars there at all. So I'll load a game now, just so you can see what it looks like. So there you go, you can see good ones up and running now. Um, picture's really good, uh, I'm really pleased with it. Not sure if it could be better, maybe I do need to do the colour biasing um, mod, I'm not sure. I might revisit that at a later date. I need to get a, a, a 47k pot, I think, before I try that. Yep, so all cleaned up and reassembled now. Quite pleased with this. Um, the games are pretty basic, um, but yeah, you can get, you know, some of the, the, the more complicated games uh, are better. Uh, they use more of the RAM and stuff. Um, I plan to be playing things like Jetpack and Dig Dug and stuff on this. Um, I've ordered uh, an expansion actually for the uh, RAM port at the back that gives up to 32k and you can configure the uh, banks there with dip switches and stuff. I'll show that in a later video, that's quite interesting stuff I guess. Um, one of the other things to point out here is obviously I've been using my SD to IEC so uh, serial you know, floppy drives will work on these if you've got one for your Commodore 64. You could actually use the um, 1541 Ultimate but not the cartridge part of it. So what I mean by that is you plug the cartridge into your C64, boot your C64 up, select a tape image um, or a D64 image, you know, a disk image, um, but then connect the serial cable that comes out of the 1541 Ultimate into this. So I might try that at some point uh, in order to be able to get access to some of the tapes and things that I can't currently do using the SD to IEC. Um, any of the programs, that have, you know, games that have been sort of um, 
where it's just a PRG file, those will work. You can load PRGs off here and you can load D64 images as well, but there's not that many games on um, the D64 format. So I made a final adjustment here to the colour pot, um, and as you can see, the colours are perfect now. Um, the little blobs are supposed to be yellow and the enemies are supposed to be blue, and there's no ghosting on the text. If you look at the grid run at the top, um, I'll zoom a little bit closer so you can see more detail. Um, Gotta wait for it. There you go. Yeah, and you can see the little ship is green, so there's no issues there. Anyway, I thought you found it interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.